first of all, you haven't supported any treaties. Leo talks about this government. It's not true for Leo to say that we're not creating jobs. I'm, I'm, I'm listening to Leah, and it's like listening to Sinn Féin, and I'm thinking, first, first of all, we saw there in Katie's report, you know, the issues that many people are worried about, medical cards, etc. They are often brought up here in Dáil Éireann. But this is a European election. If people do elect you, Leah, are they electing a Eurosceptic to the European Parliament? Not at all. In fact, Sinn Féin critically engages with Europe uh, on every legislation and every piece of treaty that comes through, and rightly so, because really we need to be looking at um, much more increased funding to all these areas. We are crippled under the austerity budgets, and people can no longer take it. I mean, as you said yourself, unemployment, emigration, poverty, which is such a huge worry, and suicide, and you see these people having their medical cards removed. People really can't take that anymore, so we need increased funding. And that's what I intend to do for the people of this country, to be an ordinary voice for the people of this country out in Europe, to get better funding and strategically invest that as well. And not only just draw down the funding, but actually implement it. We find that in a lot of cases some of the funding goes back because it's not actually strategically implemented. And so that really has to be addressed. We okay. need to be bringing local and national politics to Brussels and not the other way around. And on some specific issues, for instance, the euro is a very big question now for the EU. Should Ireland, do you believe, withdraw from the euro? No, I think it would be very complicated and complex to do that. We are, with, we are tied up with the union and the, the monetary union, and, and there we have to stick with it. However, I would say that we should be looking to the, to the union, really, to progress a lot more in terms of a social agenda, and we should be putting in protective clauses and equality budgeting to protect those who are most vulnerable and those who are the weakest in our society, and that's clearly not being done because there's so much emphasis, obviously, putting out on bailing out the toxic uh, the banks that, that have given us such a humongous uh, debt that we're crippled with. But we really need to have a balanced approach where we need to be putting in those social clauses. Come in on that. Okay. For a start, I think one of the main problems here, and even Sean, you alluded to it there when you said, you know, that's not a European issue when you were talking about the health thing. And this is one of the main problems that we have with this huge disconnect that we have from Europe and this country. This is why we need to be bringing local and national politics to Europe and not kind of treating it as, oh, that's just a European issue and it doesn't really connect to Ireland. In terms of jobs recovery, the reality of it really is that the people on the ground are not seeing that recovery. I met a fisherman yesterday from Castle Castletown Bear. He is surviving on his children's allowance. He gets no dole, he gets nothing on the days he's not fishing. And as you know yourself, the fishing industry is in absolute disarray. So really the reality of the recovery in terms of the jobs, we welcome any jobs, but the fact is there is no decent pay there. There are jobs in low paid sectors like hospitality, um, and where they're heavily subsidised with VAT and so on and so forth. So really the reality of the recovery is not being seen on the ground mm. and I don't think that we're going to see that unless we have proper investment and unless we properly draw down and have a real youth guarantee and the globalisation fund and you know this government drew down a quarter of a billion less than previous governments. So that doesn't really inspire confidence in terms of okay, drawing Phil, down come funding. Back in there. Leah, you, your Ryan government... Would be right not to support the last fiscal treaty which is really given uh, well the people of this the country whole, a the nightmare the of a budget to well be dealing you know, with, if you which want is really caused by your government, Phil. If you want to talk so, about... You know, you wouldn't buy a pair of shoes now without trying on the size and see what it, what it fits like. We critically engage with all these treaties. Well, you see, we that's... forensically go through each legislation and see okay, what's right for now, Leah. That's, that's, that's fine. fine. Not to be fair, Leah. You, you know. have to get your facts right for a start regarding the six the counties. Facts are there clear. is a block grant there which really is administered by the by Westminster. It is not administered by Sinn Féin. Sinn Féin. So power. really, you have to consider that, and Sinn Féin have called for that block grant to be uh, removed in that sense that we have more funding in the north. Health, so we don't have that. Is Control, is as, no, you, as you is say, no, we did power. stop the water charges coming into the north. So you should get your facts right. Health 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 and here we have the government going against a directive from the EU. It hasn't been passed by the Commission yet. And so I also believe that there will be a 10% reduction because of that. We'll be penalised because it's going to the local authorities. And so really, you are mm. killing the communities of this country. All that voluntary shared experience is going. We're in danger of privatising it. And so it's a huge loss to the rural communities okay, of this Leah, country. Can I just ask you a question? You're obviously here and you represent a very modern, often female, um, anti-austerity maybe side, a new image of Sinn Féin. But I suppose during the election, midway through the election, when the news was on and people, I suppose, were listening to stories of the Jean McCombell investigation, do you accept that that reminded them maybe of a darker past of the Republican movement? 
Well, there's no question about it. We, Ireland went through a very troubled history and nobody is denying that, you know, and there was terrible conflict on both sides. Mm -hmm. Sinn Féin have repeatedly called for a truth and rec reconciliation uh, committee to be put in place so that we can get closure on this on both sides. And that's vital. And really, I'm not belittling anybody, and at the heart of this is the killing of Jean McConville, which is dreadful for her family. It was wrong then, it's wrong now. And so, but at the same time, I think with the greatest respect to that family, what I'm hearing on the doors is people worried about the bread and butter issues and how to keep a roof over their heads. Bill, you wanted to come back on. Yeah. Thank you all very much. I wish you all the very best of luck. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.